Welcome to a lesson on Euler's method to approximate the solution to an initial value problem. Given we have an initial value problem in the form of dy dx equals f of x comma y, where y of x sub zero equals y sub zero, unless f of x comma y is of a special form, it is generally very hard, if not impossible, to find a nice formula for the solution of the problem. If the equation can be solved in closed form, we should do that. But what do we do if we have an equation that cannot be solved in closed form? What if we want to find the value of the solution at some particular x? Or perhaps we want to produce a graph of the solution to inspect the behavior. In this lesson, we will learn about the basics of numerical approximation of solutions. The simplest method for approximating a solution is called Euler's method. It works as follows. Take x sub zero, given by the initial condition, and compute the slope m, which is equal to f of x sub zero comma y sub zero. Recall the slope is the change in y per unit change in x. Follow the line for an interval of length h on the x-axis. Hence, if y equals y sub zero at x sub zero, then we say y sub one, the approximate value of y at x sub one, which is x sub zero plus h, is y sub one equals y sub zero plus h times f of x sub zero comma y sub zero. Then we just repeat this process until we reach the desired x value. In general, x sub n is equal to x sub n minus one plus h, and y sub n is equal to y sub n minus one plus h times f of x sub n minus one comma y sub n minus one. Looking at the graph on the right, the red graph would be the result of using Euler's method to approximate the true solution which is graphed in blue, where the point a sub zero is x sub zero comma y sub zero, the point a sub one is x sub one comma y sub one, and so on. Let's take a look at an example. Let's consider the equation y prime equals y cubed divided by three, where y of zero is equal to one, and h equals one. We're asked to use Euler's method to approximate y of two. We begin by determining x sub zero and y sub zero, given by the initial condition, and therefore x sub zero is equal to zero, and y sub zero is equal to one. Next, we determine x sub one, Notice if n is equal to one, x sub one is equal to x sub zero plus h, or in our case, x sub one is equal to zero plus one or one. And now we determine y sub one. Notice for y, when n is equal to one, on the right we have y sub one equals y sub zero plus h times f of x sub zero comma y sub zero, which gives us y sub one is equal to y sub zero, which is equal to one, plus h, which is one, times f of zero comma one, because x sub zero is zero, and y sub zero is one. Next, we determine f of zero comma one by substituting one into f of x comma y, which is y squared divided by three, giving us one plus one times one third, or four thirds for y sub one. Now that we have x sub one and y sub one, we can determine x sub two and y sub two. x sub two is equal to x sub one plus h, which in our case is one plus one or two. Using the formula for y sub n, if n is equal to two, on the right we have y sub two is equal to y sub one plus h times f of x sub one comma y sub one, which gives us y sub two is equal to four thirds, since y sub one is four thirds, plus h which is one times f of one comma four thirds, because x sub one is one and y sub one is four thirds. Notice to find f of one comma four thirds, we substitute four thirds for y in y squared divided by three, and therefore y two is equal to four thirds plus one times the square of four thirds divided by three, which simplifies to 52 27ths. And because we're approximating y of two, we stop here. Our approximation for y of two is 52 27ths, or approximately 1.926. If we look at the two graphs below, for the graph on the left, the point on the left is the point zero comma one, given by the initial condition. The point on the right is x sub one comma y sub one, which is one comma four thirds. Then looking at the next graph, the point on the right is x sub two comma y sub two, which is two comma fifty two twenty sevenths. Now in this particular case, we can actually solve the initial value problem and compare the exact value of y of two to our approximation. If we solve the given initial value problem, 
we get y equals negative three divided by the quantity x minus three, giving us y of two is equal to positive three. So the exact value of y of two is positive three, and using Euler's method, where h is equal to one, our approximation is 1.926. Again, looking at the graph, the red graph is the particular solution. Notice the point on the right is two comma three, and the point on the right of the green graph, again, is two comma 1.926. The vertical distance between the two points would be considered the error. One way to get a more accurate approximation would be to decrease h. We use h equals one, but if we use h equals 0 0.5 or 0 0.25 or even 0 0.1, we would get a better approximation. The difference between the actual solution and the approximate solution is called the error. We usually talk about just the size of the error, and we do not care much about its sign. The point is, we usually do not know the real solution, so we only have a vague understanding of the error. But to be more formal, the absolute error is equal to the absolute value of the difference of the true value and the approximation, and the relative error, normally given as a percentage, is equal to the absolute error divided by the absolute value of the true value. And finally, the table below shows the approximations using smaller values of h. Notice as we use smaller and smaller values of h, the approximations get closer and closer to three, which is the true value of y of two. I hope you found this helpful.